All right, today we're gonna to talk about four different stocks that you can buy and hang on to for hopefully a decade or more. And this is my preferred method of investing. I'm a little bit of a student of Warren Buffett. This is how he does things. He buys stocks and hangs on to them for a long, long time rather than buying stocks every week or every day and just kind of going through that cycle. And so I'm actually bringing on an expert in this video, Joseph Hogue, who runs another YouTube channel called Let's Talk Money, which talks a lot about different investing techniques, uh, some basic stuff, beginner stuff, as well as some advanced stuff. And it's a great channel, fantastic channel. They recommend you check out. And Joseph has been doing stuff like this for a long time. He's been picking winning stocks. He's got a real thorough history with all this. He's a chartered financial analyst. He used to be an equity analyst for some private wealth managers. So all that to say, I wanted to pick his brain on this and get his opinion on this and see what he recommends. And I actually went out and bought a few of these stocks. So I hope you find this helpful. I hope you get some good ideas. And without any further ado, let's get to it. Tell me about, so, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about dividend stocks. I've always been uh, personally uh, passionate about dividend paying stocks. Like I, I love a dividend paying stock. And for those who don't know, basically this is a company who is returning some of the profits to the shareholders. So rather than reinvesting all the earnings back into the business to make it grow, they give some of the money out to the shareholders. And that is really fun. I enjoy that because it's basically an extra way you can earn. So not only can the stock price go up, but you can get paid from that dividend as well. Now, mm -hmm. so tell me why you love them. I'm assuming it's the same reasons, but is there more to it than that? Well, sure. Yeah. Who doesn't like getting paid to invest, right? Making yeah. money while you're, while you're investing. Uh, and, and there's actually a, a few other reasons that, that dividend stocks actually outperform the, uh, the stock market. You know, research has been, uh, research after research has shown that you know, over the longer run, long term, dividend stocks do outperform. And it's yeah. uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, one, that uh, that dividend you, you collect is always a positive return. Uh, and so yep. you'll find that, you know, it, it varies from year to year, depending on what the, the rest of the stock market does. But, uh, you know, sometimes those dividends are, you know, 50, 60% of, of the total return on the market, just because, yeah. you know, stock prices have come down, come down so much, uh, you know, in that in that year. But also, you know, there's, a, there's really a fundamental reason why dividend stocks tend to outperform. And that's because they act as a, as a cash, uh, you know, as, as cash discipline on management. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you, you get to be one of these, these executives in these uh, Fortune 500 companies and uh, you start looking for those, uh, for those, ego, uh, those ego deals, right? You know, acquiring other companies that are going to make yeah. your company bigger. You start, uh, you know, those, those big... Uh, headline projects that uh, are going to put your face on Bloomberg or, uh, you know, in, in the Wall Street Journal. And they're not always the best interest of the shareholders. Right? Yeah, you know, they, yeah. These ego deals uh, are, are a lot of times wastes of money. So what a dividend does is, is it's that cash discipline. You know, the, the, the company has to pay this dividend out every three months. Uh, so maybe it can't afford to, to go after some of these, these low return deals that, uh, that the executives might want to might wanna chase. So, uh, so that, that cash discipline has a, has a real way of some financial, really financial discipline on the company. Uh, and, and that tends to, uh, you know, make, make the companies perform better, more efficiently. And, uh, and the stock price shows it, you know, the stock price, not, not only the dividends, but also, also the stock price. Yeah, that's right. I never thought about it that way, but that's a really good point. And yeah, and that's exciting to hear that they consistently outperform, uh, the, the rest of the stocks because they, they do that's great and, and actually we've that. got a uh, we started a, a a dividend portfolio challenge this year mm -hmm. uh, in january i invested a thousand dollars on m1 finance which I, I believe you've got a you've got an account there too mm -hmm. uh and uh 10 dividend stocks and so far halfway through the year it's 20 up 20 percent you know a, a couple of them one of our our stocks uh haynes brands is up 68 percent so far this year and it's actually outperforming the market by uh, about eight percent so uh, really going to prove the point that uh, the dividend stocks can, uh, can outperform the market and, uh, and less volatility too. You know, this last, uh, I guess we're recording this in June, but uh, you know, just, just May last month, uh, the stock market fell by about 7% on, uh, on a lot of trade fears and, and other, other ideas. Uh, but the dividend portfolio that we're running only came down by two or 3%. So, and you see that a lot in dividend stocks is, they're not quite as volatile as, as the rest of the market just because, you know, they're, uh, they're paying out that constant positive return and, uh, and they're a little bit better managed, it turns out. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's great. All right. Well, so that begs the question, like what, what's in the portfolio or what are the top five that we, uh, that we want to talk about? Sure. Uh, well, you know, there's, uh, I, I actually love that idea of, of using funds, you know, uh, besides just the individual stocks, I, I always suggest that people hold, you know, 50, 60% of their portfolio. So, so even the majority in funds, even if you're going to pick stocks, uh, what that does yeah. is, you know, you've got the majority of your portfolio in, in some funds, uh, bond funds, stock funds, and real estate funds. Uh, that gives you a nice market return uh, and a, really a stress-free investing strategy, right? And then if you do want to pick stocks, then you take the rest of your money, maybe uh, 30, 40, 30 or 40%, and just pick, you know, 10 stocks, right? Uh, just a, a handful of stocks that you really feel good about, uh, that you really, uh, uh, you know, like the products there. Maybe they, they've got these uh, generational forces, these big universal trends behind them, uh, like that aging population and food demand and, and automation uh, that are gonna that are gonna drive those those stocks. So so basically, you know, uh, that's gonna limit how much you have in each stock. So even if you make a bad decision, it's not gonna destroy your portfolio. You're still gonna get a a really good return from those funds, uh, but it still gives you the chance for maybe a little bit extra return uh, with uh, with with those dividend stocks. So, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a few that I, that I do really like, uh, and you know, a, a couple of them from, uh, you know, from, from some foreign stocks. Uh, one that I like is China mobile, that's ticker CHL. Uh, and you know, I, I know a lot of, a lot of investors, they like to get their, their for their international exposure through us companies, right? So they'll invest in Apple, which uh, obviously sells iPhones all over the world. Uh, they'll invest in Nike, which same thing sells their shoes all over the world. But you know, as we're seeing this year, really, uh, you, that's just not enough. You know, anytime uh, any country can can look at another country's companies and other countries' uh, products, and you, you know, limit limit how many how much they can sell in, in their country. So we're seeing a lot of that with yeah. you know, with Apple in China and, and some of those other countries or some of those other companies. So you really right. need. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, so you really need uh, exposure to companies within. Uh, specific companies or countries, and what I'm looking at here is is just the the simple fact that that China is coming into its own as far as uh, economically or around the world. And uh, you know, I, I think for the next ten or or twenty or thirty years, uh, you need access or exposure to that market through through some of the domestic companies. So yeah. uh, China Mobile is is a, a great example. You know, it's one of the three big telecom companies in China. Uh, and really has kind of a uh, an agreed upon monopoly uh, on the uh, on the Chinese That's market. Good. You know, it's a, it's about sixty percent of the total wireless market there. Uh, Nine hundred and sixteen million subscribers. So so just this one company's uh, wow. wireless subscribers is about three times the population of the entire United States. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and and growing, you know, growing by double digits a year. They're they're a leader in. Uh, they're going to be a leader in five G, which is going to be another one of those big uh, trends for the next decade. Uh, some of the some of the things that's going to unlock. Uh, so and, and again, why I really like it is is you know partially owned by the government. So uh, you know the government kind of uh, makes sure to keep out other uh, uh, other competitors into that into that wireless or telecom market. Um, you know, it's not going to zoom higher because they're probably going to kind of control the, the competition between those three big players, but it pays a 4% dividend yield. And, awesome. uh, and that's only half the company's profits paid out to that dividend. So still mm -hmm. lots of room for growth, uh, for the company. And, and, and it's, it's one of my, one of my really, uh, one of, one of my basic long-term picks, I think for, yeah. for a lot of investors. That's great. Um, I love that. Um, all right. So what else? Give me more. Uh, Another one is, uh, and let's go back to this, this fund theme. You know, one of my favorite funds, funds is, is the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, or, or ticker VNQ. Uh, and and this, isn't, uh, you know, this is a, a fund that holds other real estate investment trusts, which are basically just companies that hold commercial real estate, rent it out, and then uh, under a, a special part of the tax code, if they pay out the majority of their earnings as a uh, or their profits out as dividends, and they don't pay corporate income taxes. So it's mm, a really efficient wow. way to, uh, to, to manage uh, real estate, right? Any other company, yeah. uh, McDonald's, you know, the largest real estate company in the world. Uh, most people don't know it, but, but it is. Uh, but they're paying those taxes, those corporate income taxes on, uh, on all their profits. 
then when yep. you get a dividend from McDonald's, you're paying uh, taxes on that as well. So it's a, it's a hmm. real big uh, you know, problem with double taxation. Uh, but if you own these REITs, you know, these real estate investment trusts, then, then that doesn't happen. So, uh, so owning the, uh, the VNQ that just gives you exposure to, uh, I think it's something like 40 or 50 uh, different uh, uh, REIT companies, uh, gives you exposure to real estate, uh, all different property types all across the country. It's just a really easy way to, uh, to kind of diversify your fund or your, your portfolio away from stocks. You know, like we were talking about that, that may sell off in, in stocks where the stock market fell about 7% this fund actually stayed steady. It was a uh, yeah. 18% return so far uh, through, throughout the year or so far for the year. And, and it, it just kind of held that, held that constant. Um, so a great way to uh, take some of the risk out of your portfolio, some great dividend uh, yield on it. If it pays a 4.2% dividend yield and it's actually returned uh, just under 15%, 14.7% annually over the last decade. So, awesome. uh, you know, besides that dividend, it's a, it's a, it's a great, uh, no great total return there. Yeah, that's really good. All right, keep them coming. What else? Okay, uh, next let's go with a healthcare company because I, I think that's another one of these generational yeah. or these these universal trends that we're seeing is is not only the uh, you know the aging demographic, the aging population is going to be demanding more of those those healthcare services, but uh, you know but just a lot of these healthcare companies are are really expanding into uh, into you know other services and products. And, and I really like Cardinal Health. So this is ticker mm -hmm. CAH. Uh, definitely deserves a, a, spot on, a spot on your list. Uh, uh, it's a $15 billion leader in medical supplies and pharmaceutical distribution. And, and while you know, a lot of the pharmaceutical distributors have come under fire over the last couple of years, uh, and, and there could always be some, some regulatory in there, regulatory pressure as far as prices, uh, this is one of those trends that, that is just undeniable. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, as you age, anybody, anybody like ourselves, as we age, we, we start seeing, uh, you know, start needing more of those medical services. I think uh, the, uh, and, and I'd have to check the data, but, the, but spending on pharmaceuticals is, is like five, 6% of, of, uh, of your spending in retirement. You know, it's, wow. it's, so it's, it's a significant portion. No um, and we're still, we're still only about halfway through that baby, baby boomer generation retiring. Mm -hmm. So there's about 10,000 yeah. people uh, you know, uh, retiring or, or, or hitting 64 years old every day, uh, between the top three pharmaceutical distribution companies. So Amerisource, Bergen, Cardinal Health, and McKesson, they control 90% of the pharmaceutical wholesale market in the country. So, uh, so they're the ones, you know, uh, managing, uh, you know, uh, negotiating with the, the manufacturers, so the drug makers, and negotiating, negotiating those prices lower for the uh, you know for the retailers uh, for the uh, the phar the pharmacies, uh, so mm -hmm. an integral part a, a critical part of that whole healthcare supply chain, and really uh, again you know one of those uh, like like we talked with the telecom in China, it's really a, a protected market you know because of that that duopoly, you know three mm -hmm. companies hold ninety percent of the market it really leaves out a, a lot of the competition, and uh, and they can drive a, a lot of a lot of profit from that. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's one of the first um, mutual funds I ever bought was in the health services thing. And yeah, it's the same thing. It's just, it's not going anywhere, especially in the US, like mm -hmm. our dependency on uh, medical services is only going up. All right. So you got a couple more you want to share? Uh, you know, I guess kind of a, a last one, I would just say uh, Campbell Soup. And this isn't yeah. necessarily in those those universal trends that that we talked about, because People always need to eat, you know, people, yeah. uh, nothing necessarily uh, uh, special about the next 20 or 30 years for, for you know, for food processors that, that we haven't seen already, but it's just a, a great company, you know, and a, mm -hmm. a solid, a solid stock pick with a solid dividend. Uh, management's really been focusing on a, uh, you know, cost savings program over the last few years. Uh, a, a lot of people, you know, uh, you might not have seen, but a lot of these food processing companies have really been hit by, by higher costs lately, uh, you know, whether it's, it's inputs to their, to their products. So that's really, uh, really limited the share growth, but, but you know, a lot of uh, the management at these companies are, are trying to turn that around. And, and I think there's just a, a lot of value in the, uh, you know, in the stock. Uh, they, they've actually, um, they're expecting to announce buyers for 
some of their businesses, they're going to spin off or, or sell part of their businesses. So that's going to unlock a lot of the, uh, a lot of the value uh, within this stock, I think. And, and, you know, it's, it's just, uh, like I said, it's just a solid dividend paying stock. Yeah. And what's it at currently? Do you know? Uh, I would have to check there. Yeah. That's no big deal, but I, I mean, I'm assuming at least two or 3%. Mm -hmm. Let me see. SMP. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, uh, I need to revisit my dividend portfolio. I have a portfolio that I set up years and years ago, but these, this is giving me a lot of great ideas. So I'm excited to, sure, uh, sure. and Campbell's actually, so, so it's at a 3.9% dividend yield, which is awesome. uh, about double, double the, the rest of the market. Uh, so yeah, if you, you know, getting back to, to just really kind of a basic idea uh, of investing, you know, you can look for some of these stocks that pay that dividend yield uh, above 3% is usually where, where I set mine. Uh, just to make sure that, you know, they have a, a commitment to returning that cash to shareholders. And, mm -hmm. and generally, those are going to be the companies that, that do well because they've got that cash discipline. Uh, yeah. You know, balance your stock picking with, uh, with some of those, those broader based funds. And uh, don't overcomplicate investing. You know, I, I mean, as an equity analyst, uh, I, I love to talk about investing and look at different strategies and things like that. But I think 90% of the people out there, you, you really don't need to. You, you need... You know, pick a handful of funds like we talked about, pick a handful of individual stocks and, uh, and kind of like what you're doing, you know, put them in a portfolio and just don't worry about it. You know, you do you yeah. make money uh, through your business or, or however you, you do that and, and live your life and, and let your stocks do what they do uh, yeah. because, you know, they're, they're going to, they're, you're going to see that, that gradual progress up and, and you're going to be all set. Yeah, that's great, man. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to share all this. And for anybody watching, definitely go check out Joseph's channel, subscribe over there. Um, Cause he's got tons more investing stuff like this. He actually talks about a whole bunch of other things. Uh, we have a good amount of overlap on our channel, but um, for investing advice and tips, like there's just so many other great videos over there. So definitely subscribe. And that's all we have for you today. So have a great day and we'll see you next time. And if you haven't already, head over to seedtime.com so you can get your free email course from us on how to master your money using biblical principles. So that's all for today. Have a great rest of your day. Adios.